It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another fucking week, another quarantined week. Um, I feel like we're making progress, though. Yeah. I feel like we're making progress. Whether or not we're making progress or not, the country about to be open. Make yeah. a swim, God damn it. Yeah. Bad timing, I would say, for Memorial Day weekend. I, I maybe don't open it up the weekend where everybody hangs out with the most people. You, you, th- you think they don't know what they're doing? You think they're Come doing on, it on purpose? Man. Uh, people got stimulus checks. All right. Open up the goddamn country. Let them go out and spend some money. Yo, but spend some money after Memorial Day. Like Memorial Day is literally and I'm guilty of this. I'm going to my boy's crib in the, in Long Island. Right. That's the point. It's so hard to resist. It's easy to resist on a random weekend. Yeah. Random weekend. You sit home. You're like, nah, I'm a wait. I'm a wait. But Memorial weekend. No, yeah, you need to be too hard people. to resist. That's why I think they've kept the temperature cold. What do you, <laughs> you think that that's harp? That's the weather machine. The weather I machine. I think the weather everything? machine. They're doing something with the weather machine. Because mm. think about it, it's May. We haven't had more than two days that were over seventy. Maybe You're one only- day that was eighty. It's been fifties, forties. Yes, but uh, Mister New Yorker. Okay. Look, look at the other forty-nine states. What about right? them? I'm sure that it's places that it's absolutely warm. It's Yo, been I don't eight- know. I don't know if you knew this about New Yorkers, but we don't think about any other state did you know that that that, that i that i knew it's, it's it's that i knew it's 80 plus degrees down south it's been that for a minute but they don't have corona down south like we do we're like the ground zero of corona it's the new york has it the worst yeah. absolutely new york has it the worst i mean california is a good testing ground to watch but I, I thought nobody's got it in california hell no california got it i think california got the third no yeah i thought they had the third highest amount of cases i thought it was Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was New York, New Jersey, and Cali. Who the fuck knows? All I know is that the fucking country is reopening. Partially. Let's go. What, hey, man. Let's go. We, got, we don't have no choice unless somebody else got some other bright options. Unless you got some of that goddamn hydrochloroquine you want to pass out. What That's is? What you should do. Give, give out shots at the bar this weekend of hydrochloroquine. hydrochloroquine. <laughs> <laughs> What's that shit called? I think you got it right. Hydrochloroquine. <laughs> yes. Listen, uh, as crazy as it may sound, um, I know a guy, I know two people actually, mm-hmm. um, but one's name is John McConnell. I can say his name cause his story is public. John McConnell is a, a radio agent mm-hmm. who literally thought he was on his deathbed. Like him and his wife wow. literally started writing their wills, like literally started writing their wills and was like, yo, I, I got Corona, you know, things are really bad. They was really, really sick. And you know, that was one of the. The, the, the last resorts was him taking the hydrochloroquine. And that was back in like early March. And then it worked. It worked. He and said it good. worked. It's a, it's a whole article on it. If you Google, Google his name, John McConnell, uh, hydrochloroquine. A, he, I forgot what I forgot what John lives at, but he has a whole article on it. He said it worked for him. So, look, I don't know. I, I would just say that before you take any of that stuff, consult the doctor. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't t- I wouldn't tell you to get it yourself and, you know, Pour up a gallon with two styrofoam cups and some goddamn Fanta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you consult your doctor, but hey, John McConnell is a living testimony. He said it would work for him. Man, if you're about to die, you're willing to take anything. Let's be honest. That, that is fact. That Experiment is fact. on me. If I'm about to die, you're giving me a week left or you give me three days, whatever it is. I don't give a fuck what it does. Just put that it on me. Fact. Let's go. That is a fact. Listen, let's get into Positively Brilliant. What a fucking idiot. Um, if you've never listened to the Brilliant Idiots podcast, if you're a new listener, if you are OG Brilliant Idiots listener, mm. this is the uh, the part of the show where we salute people for being positively brilliant. Mm. And um, we just give people the credit they deserve for being a fucking idiot. Yes. Uh, where do we start, show? I mean, I think we both know. Yeah, man. I think we yeah, both man. know. Do you want to crack yeah, it off? Yeah. I think we're both thinking about the same thing, Charlotte. Yeah, man. I um Positively Brilliant. Mm. Absolutely has to go to mm. uh, the deal, and I say the deal because I, I feel I like, like it's that. two. It, yeah, it's two I entities like involved. Yes, Spotify and Joe Rogan. Hundred percent. You know, um, the reason I have to include both of them is because, all right, the reason I love podcasts, right, is because podcasts, 
podcasts elevate everything that made the world of radio great. Talk to me. Well, when you're in the audio business, um, to me, the thing that makes any audio business great, person, uh, radio or podcast is personalities. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Everything else is secondary. I don't care. Like, I don't care what anybody tells me. It's kind of like the argument, you know, Michael Jordan was trying to make with Jerry Krause. Like when Jerry Krause talks about management and the you organization. You still need the players. Bro, you need the players. Yeah. Who's in them fucking jerseys? Yeah. Okay. If you don't believe me, go play an old fucking video game when Michael Jordan wasn't allowed to be um, in the video games because of his deal with Nike or whatever. And, and tell me that basic ass 23 with the ball head wasn't trash. All right? mm-hmm. You wouldn't want that. Mm-hmm. All right. You want that Jordan on the back. You want that MJ. So in radio, regardless of you know what kind of company you have, whether it's a, a podcast company, a radio company, you need talent. And a lot of times these companies don't like to invest in talent. You know, uh, when it comes to radio, radio turned into a jukebox, you know, and talent became secondary. And that's why I think person, that's why I think podcasts Explain have grown a jukebox the way that they grow. to all the young jukebox. people listening that don't know what a jukebox is or have never used a jukebox. <laughs> 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 a jukebox is basically your iPod, but it's big as hell. Yeah. And it's, it, it sits on the floor in like local juke joints. There. I don't know how to explain what a juke joint is. Yeah, too. Yeah. Just a that's bar. A there was like yeah, that machine in the bar that you put a dollar and you could play a few songs. You play music. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you're saying think- that like radio kind of transitioned from having these personalities that would talk a lot to this place where you would just play different songs. So then that's the it. radio station stopped investing in personalities as much because I guess they weren't as important. Absolutely. And that's why, kind of weirdly, it's almost like radio experienced the AI takeover before people at factories or people at fast food restaurants Mm -hmm. in that regard, you know, where it's like, Mm -hmm. oh shit, we can get a robot to do your job for you. Boom. Are are in certain cases because the only place that a lot of radio stations still care about talent is morning drive. Right. Right. So, but, but, but when you have, a, a great morning show. All you got to do is syndicate that morning show throughout the country, which I'm not arguing about. I'm not complaining about. I'm a nationally syndicated radio personality. Right. Great. Great for me. But what about the next Charlemagne? What about the next Bobby Bones? Mm. What about the next, you know, Elvis Duran? You know, when Joe Rogan, you know, um, we was on his podcast. I think that was last year. And Joe Rogan said he feels like I'm the last great radio personality. I'm like, I'm the last great radio star. That kind of hurt. You know what I'm saying? Even though it, it yeah. feels good to be that, but it still hurt because I'm like, damn, this is my industry. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't want to see my industry just, you know, go to the wayside because people aren't doing what Spotify did with Joe Rogan, which is invest in top tier talent. Mm-hmm. It's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. You, If you're a fucking owner of an NFL team, if you're an owner of an NBA team, you're an owner of an NHL team, you're an owner of a TV network, you're an owner of a fucking movie industry you go try to get the best person Mm. and you don't penny pinch with the best person you cut the best person the fuck off Mm. and then you sit back and watch your stocks go up 11 percent like spotify did yesterday Mm -hmm. simple like why do we complicate this thing man so for me i just think that it's brilliant that it's brilliant on spotify's in that they recognize top tier talent and that they invest in top tier talent and it's brilliant on Joe Rogan's end because he didn't have to do this, right? You look at a guy who uh, uh, last year he made thirty million dollars off live shows, off ad revenue, off what he does on YouTube. Literally, he made Forbes said he made thirty million dollars. Mm. I Why thought that was he, just off the he, podcast thirty mil. Yeah, it was just off the podcast. So not even including the live shows, not including his equity in the in the brands that he uh, he owns. They said, like they said, they, they said his live shows, ad revenue, and what he makes off YouTube. His oh. podcast made thirty million dollars. The podcast made thirty million. Yeah, 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 yeah. The podcast, not him. Yeah, Joe yeah. Rogan's podcast made thirty mil. So that's not something he had to do unless Spotify came with a life changing number, which yeah. clearly they did. Yeah, you know what I mean. But that's what you do. When you're investing in that kind of talent, but I just, I just, I, I respect Joe because, uh, what, eleven years he's been doing this podcast. Some people get comfortable, mm. you know. Some people, 
are, 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 are good with their spot. They're not thinking about what that next level is or how they can get to that next level. Clearly, he's thinking like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I just think it's a, I think it's a positively brilliant move um, from both parties. And I just really commend Spotify for investing in talent because I just feel like that's what the audio business has to do. I think that's what radio has to continue to do if they want to be relevant. I think that, you know, these radio companies that are getting into the podcast space, you have to put, you have to invest into these podcasters. Mm. Like you just you just you just have to these pod is, is podcasters out here that are bigger than 90 percent of all radio personalities out right now so why 100%. wouldn't you invest in that talent so i just think it was a brilliant move yeah i agree with you i think it was uh brilliant and i agree for both parties like let's start with spotify you know mm -hmm. what is spotify at the end of the day right it's an audio platform right mm -hmm. um it wants to be i would assume the place that everybody goes to listen to anything. And right now, I think that they've got the music part down, right? Like when I go listen to music, I turn on Spotify. It's just easier. I feel like the algorithms are, algorithms are better for like choosing music, et cetera. But there are other things that we listen to outside of music. Matter of fact, we might listen to podcasts more than music. So if they're going to be an audio platform, they got to get into the podcast space. Now, in order to get into the podcast space, you need to qualify yourself as a place for podcasting. There is no better way to do that than having the biggest podcast in history yeah. on your platform. 100%. So, so they invested, when you think about it, they invested in brand. They invested 100%. in their own brand. They bought brand. When you get the Joe Rogan experience onto your platform, now you're a podcasting platform. You immediately become a podcasting platform. And, and so I thought that was brilliant from them business wise. And then also from Joe, I thought it was brilliant. The fact that he said, I don't work for Spotify. They are licensing my content. Oh, whoa, whoa, right? whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, That's I something that we got to oh, point man. out. And let's explain oh, that man. to the people. Explain, explain that difference between that. Um, I mean, it was a few things about the deal, right? Uh, the fact that, cause I was reading up on it. I read up on it a lot last night, but it, right. when he said, um, that they didn't buy Joe Rogan's company. They bought Joe Rogan's show, which well, to me is brilliant within itself. Licensed the show for three well, yeah, years. License, I'm sorry, li li licensed Joe's show, but they didn't buy his company. If you look at a lot of other deals Spotify did, they actually bought the company. So that means that they own the IP. So like uh, Gimlet, Anchor, uh, Bill Simmons and The Ringer, like those investments were made into an actual company. This was a licensing deal uh, where they made an investment into a show and a singular individual. Um, but explain the difference between owning the show and licensing it. Yeah, Licensing, I mean, licensing just means li that they have the right to distribute it exclusively. That's it. That's all they don't own it. They don't own it. You get it back at the it. end of that licensing deal. It's still That's yours. Right. They're essentially leasing your show like you would lease an apartment. So they're leasing That's exactly what they're doing. your show or like you lease a car, et cetera. And the genius thing about it is, let's say Joe doesn't like this after three years. He gets right back to what he's doing. Let's say he does like it after three years and he sees the value that he's brought to Spotify. Well, shit, crank up that deal. Let's run it back. But I continue to own this. Yeah. I thought it was so such a brilliant thing. Now, I know a lot of people are going to go, well, yeah, you could reduce the amount of people that are going to go over there. You could reduce the amount of people that are listening. Spotify, I would say, is not like um, like Luminary or one of these like fledgling startups that got a lot of money but didn't even really know what they were doing. They want to be like the Netflix of podcasting. People already have Spotify. It's a very popular listening platform. 200, 286 million monthly subscribers. And furthermore, you don't need to pay for Spotify if you don't want to. So if you want to listen to the Joe Rogan experience for free, like you were listening to on Apple Music, you can do that. Spotify will insert ads just like Rogan had ads on his thing. So I don't think he's given up that much um, like efficiency of searching for content. Like, yeah, people have to download the Spotify app or whatever. But yeah. I think that the way they're rolling it out, which is fucking brilliant, is and you, I think you were explaining this to me last night, right? They're not doing a full transfer until January 1st, right? Yeah, so September 1st, his catalog will go over there. September 1st, all the back episodes go over all there. The, all, 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 the back, all, the, all the back catalog, because he, he's giving up all 11 years of his catalog. So all the catalog will be there on September 1st. And then um, exclusive, he'll be exclusively uh, 
coming out on Spotify, I think January 1st. So now you have, basically, Joe Rogan has from now until January 1st to get every single person that listens to it regularly to just hit download on the Spotify app. That's literally yeah, all. You, was, you have six months to hit download on the Spotify app. I mean, it is... And to be honest, it's a good move by Spotify because there's some iconic interviews on Rogan. Like if you want to hear the Absolutely. Elon Musk one, if you want to hear, he's like, the way I look at his podcast is kind of like, remember Encyclopedia Britannica? Remember when we were growing up, we had that shit? It was all those yeah, books yeah, yeah, and you yeah, could yeah. look up anything. Absolutely. And I feel like he's had all these experts on his podcast. So that's the new generation's Encyclopedia Britannica. It's like, you want to hear Killer Mike talk about the black experience in America? Well, there's an iconic interview right there. You want to hear these people talk about that? So, I, and dude, to go make fuck you money to make like generational it's, wealth, it's, shit. It, Cheers. And that's the thing, right? Like, um, yeah, it's risk involved, right? It's risk involved when you leave Apple. It's risk involved when you take all your content off YouTube. Apple makes up 60% of all podcast listening audience. But, yo, at some point, you got to bet on yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? You Joe fucking Rogan, right? Yep. So if if, if you if, if you got a cult like following and you know you believe in your people and you believe in your audience, they should follow you. But guess what? Even if they don't, you still won. <laughs> what the fuck? You you walked away with a hundred plus M's at the end of the goddamn day. You're How much 52 is it? years old. How much is it? The deal, do you know? I think that Joe Rogan up front probably got a hundred and twenty five to a hundred and fifty million. And I think on the back end, he stands to make probably another hundred and fifty. Explain that to me, the back end thing. Well, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure that he has, you know, bonuses. I'm sure that he has bounties to where, you know, it's people can go to Spotify and say, Hey, I'm, I'm downloading Spotify specifically for the Joe Rogan podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure that they'll be able to see the amount of people who yeah. signed up to Spotify specifically for the Joe Rogan podcast. It's kind of like the same deal. Howard Stern had with Sirius satellite radio. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like he, yeah. you know, he, he got, he got a certain amount up front, but then he had a whole bunch in stock and then he had a whole bunch of other bonuses and incentives and things like that. So yeah. I'm, so Joe, I'm sure Joe still has the same, the same type of deal. I, c- I can't see him getting no more. I can't see him getting any less than 125 up front. Oh, because just 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 for everything he gave up. Because think about it. Like. If they did, if he was making 30 million a year on a podcast and it's a three year deal, it doesn't make sense for him to do it for only 120 because he yeah. was going to make 100. He was going to make 90 in that amount of time or the podcast could grow in that amount of time. And maybe he ends up making 120. I feel like he's got to be double what he would have made in those three years at the current rate, bare minimum. So it's yeah, like, I, I, think I, it's, I think it's gotta be at least that, 180 and maybe over 200 mil with those incentives and stuff that you were talking about total. You think 180 up front? I think it's gotta be guaranteed 180 because he's gonna make 90 in those three years anyway. You gotta give me some incentive. You gotta double me up if I'm gonna go. We don't, we don't. We, we don't know what he was doing prior, though. Like, 30 million might have been his best year, which which is the number you should negotiate on. Yeah. You know like, what I'm saying? Don't, you, don't the- you sell a business based on, like, 10x what your revenue is in the last year? Something like that. There's, like, because you assume that, well, he's not selling his whole business, but you assume growth. Yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. only have it for three years, maybe you sell it at two X or something. I don't know. Some I, somebody really yeah, smarter I, than me can figure that out. But Yeah, I think, I think five years, I think it's, like, five years, 30. That's why I say I think I can't see him getting no less than 120, 150 up front. Mm-hmm. And probably he probably stands to make like another 100, 150 on the back end over over time. Now, I, I, but but we could be completely wrong. Totally. But but the Wall Street Journal reported that it was definitely over 100. It, yeah, it has to be 100 percent. Now, does this get you thinking? Does this get you thinking about your future? Not only with this podcast, but with radio and the opportunities for you to do, you know, to be in the audio business on paid platforms. It's got to get you thinking. You know, you know how like, you know how, you know how when you're friends with somebody and they already know the answer to a question, <laughs> they, ask you, they, ask you, they ask you on a podcast just for the content. 
Hell fucking yeah. Who wouldn't th- who wouldn't think like this? Hey, <laughs> sometimes you gotta ask the pe- you gotta ask the questions that people wanna know, bro. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell Hell fucking yeah. So let me can I, I tell saying, you can I tell you something Charlemagne uh, uh power last week? You were like, I'm not talking about Takashi at all. We talked about Takashi. That clip of you talking about Takashi, I think, hit a million fucking views on our clips channel that had two thousand subscribers. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but but yeah, hell fucking yeah. I sent that. I actually sent that Joe Rogan article around to a lot of different people that I respect in the audio business from radio to podcast, you know, just to, you know, see what they're thinking. You know, what's their temperature on this? How do they feel? Because like things like this, to me, they're a great disruption. It's a beautiful disruption. Right. You know what I'm saying I, I love the fact that Spotify is disrupting things the way that they are right now. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I think that that's what you have to do when you're trying to make a splash. When you're trying to make a splash, a, you got to go get the big fucking whale and you drop that big fucking whale in the ocean and you watch all the water shoot up in the fucking air and everybody else gets wet. Like it sends a message to everybody else that wants to be in the podcast space. If you want to be in the podcast space in a real way, then you have to stop looking at podcasters like they're just some, you know, third, fourth weight, fourth rate broadcasters and understand that these people are top tier it's yep. 2000 and fucking 20 yep. you know what i mean when you when you're talking about the great communicators you're talking about the great people with microphones you're out of, you're out of your fucking mind if you're not putting some of these podcasts yo because think about it how do you break into the radio business back in the day right it's similar to the news business you have to go mm-hmm. to a small market you try to make it at a small market then they maybe bump you up to a mid-level market then they maybe bump you up to uh, a major market right mm-hmm you could, yep. if you're a kid that's growing up and he lives in Brooklyn, it's like, do I really want to move to fucking North Dakota to do the afternoons? Or do I just want to start a podcast and build that shit up right here with my homies and have the guests on that I want to have on and talk about the shit I want to talk about and curse if yes. I want to curse, have the conversations I want to have. Of course, I'm going to do that instead of move to North Dakota. That's why I love the podcast space, man, because, you know, it goes back to what I was saying about, <clears throat> you know, who's next, right? Because. Only on the only in the podcast world right now can you see this wild ass dude from Brownsville on Twitter and invite him to your podcast and then he becomes a podcast star himself. <laughs> Tax stone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 only yeah. in the podcast world can you know OG rap veterans, you know, like Noriega and Joe Budden reinvent themselves. You know, in in a different yeah. way for a different audience. You know what I mean? Ten years ago, both of them was probably trying to figure out how to keep their rap careers going. Ten years later, neither one of them were thinking about fucking rap. Yeah, you, you understand? You understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it's podcasts are still. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's so much easier uh, to do that of, with a podcast? Of what you just said. I don't have to. I don't have to wait. It's no. It's no red tape. Yeah. Like like with radio. There's really not a lot of real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like everything yeah. is automated. So where do you put the new guy? Yeah. I started off doing overnights, 12 midnight to five in the morning. You know what I mean? Like who's getting that opportunity now? Like right. who's listening to air checks in 2020? Like the new air check is the podcast. The new air check yeah. is the video, the video blog. That's where the new air check is Instagram. Like if I'm a radio consultant or I'm a radio program director, I'm scouring the internet looking for that next talent. But you know right. why a lot of them aren't doing that? Because they're not looking for talent. Mm. They're looking for music. And and Spotify is so smart because Spotify is, you know, they part of that lawsuit right now where the writers are trying to get, you know, uh, more more royalties, right? This is Spotify? Like Spotify, Pandora. Oh, all uh, the streaming platforms. All, okay, a, a, gotcha, almost yeah. all of the streaming platforms. I think everybody except for Apple and I'm, I'm, I think Tidal, I'm not sure. But they're trying to get more money. Like, so these songwriters are trying to get more money. That's not a sustainable business, right? And plus, everybody got the music. Apple got the same music. Spotify got the same music. iHeart got the same music. They all have the same music on these streaming services. Pandora, what will separate all of these platforms from each other if everybody's base is music? The same thing that separates radio stations. The fucking personalities. You got to invest in talent. Like, it's not rocket science, people. It's simple. And that's why, like, even 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 any anything I do next, man, whatever platform it is, I have to have the ability to empower other people. That's why I love what we've been doing over here at the Loudspeaker Network, you know, for the for the for the for the past several years. Like, you know, this enables us 
to empower other people. Right. By just by just being able to launch their podcast, you know, whether they whether they stick around with live speaker or not, who gives a damn? I just like the fact that it's so many different voices being cultivated. Mm. And that's that's what I that's what I'm I'm happy, you know, Spotify is doing. And I can't wait to see what everybody else does. I can't wait to see how this makes, you know, iHeart move with the way they're doing their podcast thing. I can't wait to see how if if, if Apple might jump in the game on some exclusive shit. Because mm. cause right now Apple got a monopoly on everything. Sixty percent, sixty percent of the podcast listening audience is on Apple, right? But they don't have any of their own exclusive podcasts. They have exclusive exclusive content like Nicki Minaj Queen Radio could easily be a podcast. Mm. Uh, what Drake is doing with Young Money Radio that could easily be a podcast. But they're not positioning it as such. They're positioning it as Young Money Radio, Queen Radio. Um, when Drake was doing it, it was over your radio. They got Beats One over there, but even that's positioned like a radio station. I'm interested to see what happens when they jump into the exclusive podcast market. Hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, it could be a huge advantage. Like, I wonder if musicians will start to do this. Do you think musicians will exclusively release their music on certain sound platforms? They'd be smart to. I mean, some of them have already done that. Chance the Rapper did that with Color and Book. But I mean, if I was somebody like Drake, I, why would I sign another record deal? I would just take money. I would just take fucking let Apple give me twenty million dollars, thirty million dollars for an a, a album, or let Spotify give me a a bunch of M's for an album and put that shit out. You know what I mean? Yeah, because think and about work, it. It's like work. the label really isn't doing anything for a guy like Drake, right? It's like nah, you don't. I don't need the label to go print out some fucking CDs and put them in a CD store. There is no CD store anymore. Everything is digital. Mm -mm. So the labels become the middleman for the elite guys. So you could just get rid of them. It's kind of like what happened with TV. It's just like TV was there. It was a great conduit to the people. But now that we can get directly to the people, TV don't need to exist. I'll just give you the shit without yeah. it being cut. And the reason the, re the reason podcasts are better than music, though, think about all of the, the ways you got to divide the pie when you're doing music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You put out a song, artists got to get paid. Producer got to get paid. Songwriter got to get paid. Label got to oh, get God. paid. All these different people got to get paid. You put out the podcast. You getting paid and your producer getting paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, like, like it's really just that simple. Your editor's getting paid. There's not a lot of people to pay out, man. I just um, it's interesting. I want to see what Spotify does too, though. Like, does Spotify continue to be aggressive? That's, they've been very aggressive. That's the thing, dude. Like, now that you've landed the big fish, right? You've cornered. You've bought brand. You've invested in brand, so now you are synonymous with podcasting because you got the big fish. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you could start doing is, if you're them, is getting niche and going, okay, we have a podcasting platform because we got the big fish, but maybe we should start servicing the niche parts of podcasting. So I want a... You know, what is that like a murder mystery podcast? They probably already have some of these, you know, I oh, want to get that. Yeah, they're doing it. Right. So it's like, let me service all the different parts of podcasting where they went with sports when they bought up the ringer. Absolutely. Right. So it seems like they're going after every little thing. So maybe they continue to do that. Who knows if they can spend the same amount of money or will be as, you know, um, generous with the deals. But uh, I think that you're going to see a trend. I think it's not only Spotify. I think you see the other ones start to spend a lot of money as well. I think that's, oh, this is what we're doing now. Let's do it. Everybody is, is in a race to, to play second in the entertainment business. It's going to be industry. It's going to be very interesting when um, these, these, these screaming platforms actually steal more from the blueprint of radio. I don't even know if I want to use the word steal, but take more from the blueprint of radio because the next logical thing after this is, is, is some type of daily programming, right? Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like you go grab, you grab, you know, if, if, if they can woo one of these top tier talents away and they put them on daily. You telling that me could be, that could be a game changer. You telling me if the breakfast club was on Apple or Spotify every single morning, you could turn in and while you were listening, you could also watch it. Because, you know, Apple has that with some of their shit now. You could like, watch oh, yeah, the music Apple TV, video. Apple TV. I think you could, like, watch the music video with the song or something. I forget exactly what I was watching. You could watch some well, Spotify, part. Spotify is doing that, too. That's why they bought all Joe's exclusive content. That's why, so, that's why they put it Imagine that. You sitting there. You watching it, 
right? Or you listen to the song and you just listen on your way to work and then something funny has happened in the studio and then you get to look at your phone and all of a sudden see the video as well? Shit. Every single yeah, day? I mean, you don't think that they're thinking that right now? You're crazy. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's, I think that's one of the reasons, Um, even with the iHeartRadio app, that's why the iHeartRadio app is so successful because you can tune into a bunch of different radio stations 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, you can listen to The Breakfast Club. You can listen to Elvis Duran. You can listen to Bobby Bones, Ryan Seacrest, Big Boy, whoever it is. And they even have other stations on there that aren't iHeart. Mm. You know what I mean? But that's a daily thing. So daily, you can go to your iHeartRadio app. Like, it's, that's only a matter of time before Spotify... I don't know about Apple so much. Apple's so interesting to me because all of that, other, all of this music shit, that's a loss leader for Apple. You want to know why they don't care, in my opinion? Because of that goddamn phone you keep picking up. Well, also, in order to download Spotify on that phone, where do I got to go? To your Apple phone. And I got to go to the Apple App Store. Apple App Store. Yeah, and yeah, anything yeah. that's downloaded and paid monthly for in the Apple App Store, guess who gets a piece? Apple. So they're like, all right, Spotify, yo, you do all the heavy lifting. We're going to get our, you know, pound of flesh off of that yeah. heavy lifting you do. We don't give a fuck. I really don't know if they're trying to compete in that space. I almost think they'd rather everybody else take care of the software shit and they just get a piece of every single time it goes on their phone. It's kind of smart. You really want to be yeah, in the I, weeds, like, you know, hustling for that shit? Like, nah, fuck that. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see if Apple gets in that space. Um, I don't know if that's something I would tell people to do though only because i just don't know how much of an investment apple would make into the the audio personality space in that way like it just seems like something they do every now and then like i could say like little wayne Nicki minaj drake whoever else they got over there but they don't it's not like spotify spotify seems to be making a real investment because that's their only way to make money right yeah. i feel like apple is doing it you know, uh, it, it's treating it like a, like your vacation home. You know, it's like, all right, yeah, we'll go out there yeah. for the summer. You know, we'll spend a few weeks there. But that's not the bread and butter. That's not the mansion. You know, the mansion yeah. is the actual computers, the, the, the headphones, you know, the, the regular phones, like the actual hardware, what they create, and then the platforms to download all the other shit. That's where I think they make their money. Even Pandora. I wonder what the fuck Pandora is doing. So I don't Pandora know how Pandora is, is still in business. I do not know. Well, you know, they merged. Well, I don't, I think Sirius Satellite Radio, they either bought Pandora or something. I know there's some type of merger with Pandora and Sirius Satellite Radio, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how both of them so, are still in business, to be honest with you. I just, no, but, you're right. Pandora did. They did, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if I was Pandora, I would have at least, I would at least have Shade 45 for free on Pandora. You know what I'm saying? Again. I mean, you might can't put that. I would put I would put like maybe rebroadcast of Howard Stern free on Pandora. Like it it have to be something there to drive me daily. Like you got this this entity, Sirius Satellite Radio, which is giving you programming every day. Yeah. Some of that free programming on Pandora to entice people to maybe, I don't know, subscribe to Shade 45 or I I don't I don't know. I just think when you have these platforms, you just have to be giving these people something daily. And like I said, iHeart does a very good job at that because you can go listen to all these different radio stations every day. But I think it's only a matter of time before one of these other streaming services, you know, gets into that, gets into that world, gets into that business. And that's going to be a real game changer. I wonder who it will be. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's, a good, that's a great question. Mm. My haircut looks great, bro. My haircut looks fantastic. I'm just getting one this weekend, bro. Fuck all that bullshit. Son, fuck it, bro. Look at this shit right here. Look at this. I can't oh, take it no God. more. Shout out to my guy, Alex, man. Came out here, bro. Different Alex. Came out here to the studio, chopped my shit up. Beautiful. You know? Okay, but, but yeah, salute to, uh, salute to Joe Rogan and Salute Spotify. to Joe, man. Congrats. Yeah, you fucking, fucking deserve brilliant. it, dog. And salute to Spotify. That's a ballsy move. But if you don't make ballsy moves, you don't make money, man. You want to be Absolutely. great. You got to do great things. So shout out to the people over there at Spotify as well. And uh, and they're not stupid people. I would not be surprised, you know, if, uh, if they try to do some daily shit soon. I would not be surprised, bro. We'll see. Uh, what a fucking idiot. I don't know if this should be in what a fucking idiot. Talk to me. Trump promoting the hydrochloroquine. Does it work, bro? 
I've heard two people tell me it works. I have two real life testimonies. Not some shit I heard on YouTube. Not some shit I heard on Google. Yeah. I know two people who told me that it fucking works. John McConnell is one of them. John McConnell was about to die. Him and his wife. And he said it saved their life. So I don't know. I, mean, I think that I think Donald Trump tells the truth every every 10 statements. Yo, it's a broken clock. I do. I do. I th- and only because he's not smart enough to know he's supposed to be lying. Right. I think that he had a moment this week because I think I, I still maintain he had Corona a few weeks ago. He looked like he had Corona. Who, oh, Trump? I think, I, yes. It's possible. I, th- and I think and I think he got on that hydrochloroquine and it helped him out. So and he was just he was just talking like he usually does. And he said that shit. I mean, your boy who, whose life was saved by hydrochloroquine. He's probably spreading the word about it. Right. I th- Yeah. I mean, he did. All, it's an article. If you Google his name, John McConnell, it's an article. He did an article about it. So, Boom. Yeah. so he's like, I want as many people to be saved by this shit, you know, as possible. So I'm going to let people know. And Trump is like, yo, the healthcare workers is using it. Like, uh-huh. hey, all I'm simply saying is if you're going to do it. Do it with a doctor's assistance. Let a doctor subscribe it to you. Don't just jump out there and motherfucking say, hey, you know, I'm just going to pop this shit. Like, no, make sure you got a doctor uh, doctor with you. I mean, it's, like, just, it's just hard to How are they going to get it? The- how are they going to get it without a doctor, bro? <laughs> you know, a dude slinging on the corner? Where are you going to get I ordered some. Say what? I ordered some. You can order some? I'm gonna be honest with you. I ordered. I went online. I went on Amazon because somebody told me to order, but they sent me like some goddamn dietary supplement. Yeah, I don't think you got hydrochloroquine. Nah, I ain't got that good shit. What do you think? It's hydro something though. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) it's 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 high. It might be hydrochloroquine. Hydrochloro hydrochloro rich homie quan is what I think think you might have got got that one. That makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, um, I don't know. Is that uh, what a fucking idiot? I'm not sure, man. I don't know. I don't know. Yo, you I know don't who know. could be what a fucking idiot? I got to finish reading the article, but this is going to be an absolutely brilliant idiot thing to do. Just talk about it before you finish the article. Fuck facts. Fuck facts, right? You know, and this is why what, it's what a fucking idiot. You know who's been apparently saying fuck facts as well? Oh. Ronan Farrow. What do you mean? So Matt Lauer wrote this piece. So New York Times wrote a piece basically saying like Ronan Farrow has been, you know, manipulating facts, manipulating history uh, in defending all of his uh, Me Too's that have come out. And then Matt Lauer just wrote an article and released an article about how um, basically shitty Ronan Farrow's journalism was. And, you know, Ronan Farrow was like writing all those pieces and take, he wrote a whole book about it. What was it called? Chris, you probably know that book. Probably be whacking off to that shit every night. What's the name of it? The name of his book? Yeah. yeah. I actually don't know. I've I've seen the articles about this, but I haven't read them either, to be honest. So, but oh, but see. there's so it's Matt Lauer who was canceled um and you know fired by MB- NBC, uh he basically wrote this piece and um it's it's called Matt Lauer why Ronan Farrow is indeed too good to be true. And I haven't finished reading it yet, but it seems like Ronan Farrow might have been fabricating some stuff. The name of his book was Catch and Kill. Yeah. I don't know, but it could be a possibility. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, all, all a lot of this Me Too stuff was he said, she said anyway. So, I mean, I don't... It's, it's, it's going to be like... If I got accused, right, by Ronan Farrell, I would say he's lying too. That's right. why I said it. Like, I, 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 Matt Lauer could be absolutely telling the truth, but nobody's going to listen to him. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, nobody's going to listen to him. Like, it would take a whole total, you know, other person to come out that had no, that didn't get me to or didn't have an axe to grind against Ronan Farrell to be like, yo, Ronan Farrell lied about a lot of stuff in that book. Or it would take a, it would take a, it would take one of the women to come <laughs> out and be like, yo, yes, this is bullshit. Yeah. I, I never, I never said that to Ronan or something like I that. I think like, the reason that it came, I think the reason why he wrote the piece is because prior to him putting out the piece, the New York Times wrote a piece questioning Ronan Farrow's uh, journalistic integrity. So, really? so he's like, oh, boom, now's the time to drop. Because if I dropped it before, it just looked like, I, you know, looks like you're copping pleas for what you did. But if the New York Times questions the credibility of the person that accused you and the reason why you don't have a job, then you drop the thing going, yup, yup, see, I didn't do none of this shit. This guy's a liar. 
Yeah. Could be interesting. Yeah. Who knows? But it might be yeah. a story that kind of pops up in the near future. Yeah, but just nobody wants to hear that from Matt Lau. Like, yo, it's like Bill Cosby screaming from his jail cell that he's getting done wrong. Like, yeah. nobody gives it. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody cares. R. Kelly, nobody cares. There's certain people. Harvey Weinstein, nobody cares. Is Harvey still alive? That chloroquine, bro. That hydrochloroquine, dog. Yeah, last we heard he had corona and you hear shit else. I think he hydrochloroquined it, man. <laughs> I really do. I think that hydrochloroquine got him back. Harvey's back, bro. Now nah, he's in prison. Is he? Yeah, he's definitely locked up. He didn't get that early 6 9 release for the corona? Nah, he, he didn't get the early 6 9 release. Now, he actually went super quiet, like, which lets me believe that he's probably going to sneak out of jail sooner than later. Yo, did you see what a fucking bitch 6 9 was acting like this week about the whole billboard thing? I did see that. There is nothing there is nothing less likable than the funny guy taking shit serious. I hate it. Donnell Rollins, you punk ass. <laughs> Fucking Donnell Rollins sensitive ass. Son, you killed him this week, bro. You killed him this week. What's the I'm gonna be, I'm, Yo, I'm gonna be Taylor, honest. I need I need everybody out there to Taylor hear Taylor gotta this play the hit. clip, bro. Will what the clip? audio fuck us up? You know the Instagram shit that you played? The post. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 No, that, it, it was so. F no, what was so funny is because I said on Brilliant Idiots what my what my strategy is with Donnell, right? And so when I posted that clip, everybody in the comments was crying, <laughs> laughing because they know I didn't get him give him credit. And yeah, sitting I'm there, sorry. sitting there watching, I was watching Donnell all weekend. <laughs> Anybody who would post it, Shade Room, Little Duval. It, like uh, anybody who would post it, he would be under the comments, like waving, like it was me, like me, like, like nobody fucking sees you, you fucking Grady from Sanford and Son looking motherfucker. <laughs> nobody sees you, you sensitive ass. He texts me, he goes, "Well played." <laughs> <laughs> He texted me then. Then he, then he tried to he tried to fish, right? He texted me and he goes, "Well played." He goes, "But you know, nobody on your page liked it except for my brother." I said, "Actually, it's got four hundred and ninety nine thousand likes." That's a lot of likes, bro. And probably more now, and like forty five hundred comments. But then I go, "But it's really ripping on Shade Room." And I sent him the Shade Room link, and he goes, "Now I know that I can just bypass you and go right to the source." <laughs> And then I text him back. I said, bro, just send me more stuff so I can never give you credit for it. <laughs> oh, it drives so, me crazy. So I, I know listen. he was tight because uh, he posted on my video. He, I didn't know. He, he texted me that, but you I didn't know what he was saying. He was like, he was like, you know, Andrew's right about you. If you ever run for politics, I'm voting for you because you're so manipulative. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Now, remember, so I did the video that the Takashi and Trump are the same and the reason brilliant. why that, thank you, man. Positively fucking brilliant. Thank you. And um, under it, he had like three comments. He was like, yo, this is dope, but we want to know what's up with that bet between Charlamagne 6 and 9 <laughs> multiple yeah. times, bro. Listen, I told, I told Donnell this. And what you said, you, you started off this conversation by saying <laughs> it's nothing worse than the funny guy who takes shit too serious. Yeah. Donnell, I, I don't even find Donnell funny anymore. Nah, come on. Donnell's bro, funny, bro. Hey, Schultz, I'm going to tell you why. It's like finding out your favorite gangster rapper, not a gangster, yo. He's too fucking sensitive. He cannot, he he can't take a joke. Nah, Donnell bro, is I'm a telling funny you, motherfucker, yo. He is. But I personally don't find him funny anymore. That's the most I'm like, that shit ain't real. Nah, that's the most brilliant idiot sentence ever. Yo, he's a funny motherfucker. He is. He is. But I don't find him funny. <laughs> it's like, listen, it's like a rapper, right? Like a, a gangster rapper. He's spitting that shit. And you're like, yo, that shit hard, but ain't nothing he talking about real. Yeah. Yeah. It just it just dilutes it a little bit for you, man. Uh, That's it. He's I love too Donnell, sensitive. man. And, I'm a fucking like, like I saw I saw Donnell. Donnell, he changed his Twitter handle to Ashy to God. And, and like, like he'll leave little comments, like people will be in the comments and they'll be like, Charlemagne's better than you at radio, better than you at podcast. He'll say little shit like, yo, he was an intern when I was doing morning radio. Or I saw this morning he posted um, he posted uh Yeah, I think this might be the beginning of my new morning show. We need options. 
Ooh. I, it's time. It, it's time for change. Ooh. Fucking Grady from Sanford and Sunface, motherfucker. You sensitive ass. I'm never giving you a good interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if you ever decide to come to Breakfast Club again, I'm gonna it's gonna be worse. Mm. I, I'm never I'm never taking you serious. It's never happening. So you're gonna treat Kim? him like Jimmy Kimmel treats Matt Damon? Always. Really? Why not? By the way, don't you love Kimmel and Damon's relationship? Yeah. And then I, I know that like he'll do little, like he's he sent me a post. <laughs> this is he great. sent me a, Yo, you sent me a DM. Leave the house, bro. You bro, need to be back. Listen, he sent me a <laughs> he sent me a DM two days ago, right? And it's an old DM because you know he's always living in the past. So it's an old DM yes. of him, Chappelle. Yes. It's him, Chappelle, and some other people on stage, right? And he gonna send me the DM to me talking about this is what real friendship looks like at Cedar God. I mean, if you get your sensitive ass out of here, man, get the fuck out of here with this corny shit, yo. I don't got time for this shit. You a fucking grown ass, 97 year old man. I don't got time for this shit you on, bro. Like, I hate shit like that. Like, take these fucking jokes and, and get the fuck out of here. You, I don't like that. I got too many comedian friends, Andrew. I don't uh, like sensitive comedian friends, man. Yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I'll pull the, the veil back a little bit. And uh, with comics, I thought when I first got into comedy, that comics were like athletes where it was just like you just bust balls the whole time right yes. that's really what i thought it was and like you just say ruthless shit to each other because that's what we would do we're playing ball we just fucking say whatever we possibly could to make you feel like shit and it's funny and that's what you do growing up when you play sports right and i remember when i first got into comedy and kind of like busting balls with some comics and if you hit the wrong chord like these are some damaged motherfuckers bro well, I don't know what chord I hit with Donnell, but I'm gonna keep hitting all of them. I'm just gonna start playing this goddamn. <laughs> just gonna strum that guitar. shit. <laughs> 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 I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of getting phone calls with motherfuckers saying to me, "Yo, I thought you and Donnell be playing." I said, "I'm playing." Right. Donnell's serious. Yeah. And and I don't know. Sad. I think Donnell's fucking around, but you 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 have a closer relationship with no, him than he no. but I think you he's fucking my, around. No, you don't see my text message. Really? He's that serious? Bro, he's so sensitive. Donnell? Bro, Schultz. He's so sensitive, yo. It's 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 actually sad. Do we need to call him up and do we need to have like a sensitive intervention? No, I want him to keep being sensitive as fuck. Uh-huh. And I and I'm gonna keep being being the asshole because Sadly, one thing that I have never been able to fix about myself, yeah, <laughs> yeah, is is being salt bay in your wounds, baby. <laughs> your salt you're, bay you're, in your, your wounds, hand is cut baby. off. You got to drop it down. Hey, <laughs> being, I don't know. Once I know something I'm doing is fucking with you, like when I'm in here, it's hard to stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm be honest with you. It's hard to stop, yo. I understand why people like the mind fuck people. But I know I'm living in this rent free. It's hard for me to stop, especially when you're a comedian. You're supposed to be the bully. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be making me beg for mercy. You're not supposed to be on other people's podcasts saying that I go too far. Yeah. And you're a comedian from the 80s. Yeah. Like, you know what that era was like. Yeah. Come on, Donnell. I can't on, speak on, on behalf of Donnell, but I will say there's a lot of comedians out there that, that talk about, we should say whatever we want on stage, and then you make a joke about them, and they're very sensitive about that it's, joke. It's bro. bullshit. It's yeah. bullshit. So I'm, 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 um, I'm slightly disappointed. I like ruthlessness. I love, mm -hmm. I love when Donnell seemed to be being very ruthless with the memes, and he was just going on me. Uh-huh. But it's like, my most basic strategy is driving them crazy. Right. And the basic strategy is just, all right, first of all, I love good content. That's my face. So I'm going to take it. Erase your name from it. <laughs> okay. Erase your fucking name from it. Erase your logo from it. Uh -huh. And put a nice little witty caption. And I'm going to get mad likes and followers. And it's going to go viral. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, and and what, what pissed him off about this one, he thought he was slick. He started it off with a clip from Brilliant Idiots. Right. With me talking about uh, 6 9 and giving 6 9 fellatio. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
for a bet that I won, by the way. Yeah. And then at the end, he put a clip of himself. Ooh. He thought I wasn't going to catch that. <laughs> and then what'd you do? <laughs> Circumcision. <laughs> ship, ship. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck out of here, Donnell. <laughs> Fuck out of here, guy. <laughs> Bye. Fuck, fuck out of here, guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm man, I'm no, just, this shit was yo, funny, how man. Long, Listen, how long before you think he puts himself in the middle of the video? I don't know, but I'm going I'm to I'm catch it when he oh, does. You got a plan for it? Right, listen, I'm going to catch him when he does. <laughs> I'm going to catch him when he does. <laughs> I'm going to catch him when he does. I love it. I just loved watching him scream for help this weekend. Like, like I saw him. I saw him in one person's comments and he was like, yeah, he just, he needs help with his content, son. Like, no, 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 don't try to, nope. Don't try to twist it now, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> son, when like Duval reposted it and then he went, Charlemagne, don't you ever do no shit like this again. But Donnell even, was right there in his I comments. Know, I know. Look at me. Look at me. I did that. I did that. Nobody knows. Nobody gives a fuck. Uh, There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, fuck, <laughs> oh, listen, he's steaming right now. Listen to this. Donnell, what up, he's, bro? Donnell, I love you, brother. We love you, dog. For I do, real. I do. I, I really do love Donnell. I just don't like sensitive people. I don't like that shit. Not, not a sensitive comedian. I, I have empathy for people who can't defend themselves. I have empathy for people who didn't ask for this type of shit. But when you're a comedian mm. and you, you can dish it but can't take it, I don't respect it. Just like I don't respect radio personalities who can dish it but can't take it. If you can talk about people, then you, you should be able to be talked about. Mm. That's it. I'm consistent with mine. Mm. I'm just I'm consistent. So you'll take the uh, jokes. We ha we have to. I take the jokes. I take the slander. I take the punches to the back of the fucking head. I am the <laughs> wrong person to talk to about any of this shit. I have been swung on for my words. Okay. Yeah. I have been fucking approached because of my jokes. From rappers, whoever else. I don't want to hear that shit from another comedian, bro. Right. Knock it the fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, positively brilliant. I do have to say that piece you did on 6 9 and Donald Trump was so fucking brilliant. Thank uh, you. It was so smart. It was hilarious. But it was, it was, it, it was a broader commentary of where we're at in our society. Yeah. You know, and it's not necessarily even about the individuals. It's not about Trump. It's not about six, nine. It's the fact that our love of celebrity, our, our, our value system, which has changed. We reward people now with clout and attention that has taken over everything so much so that we have a guy in the white house because he was a celebrity who knew how to fish for fucking clout yep. in America. We're, we're living in this age of idiocracy where we're so fucking dumb and we're so stupid that we can be manipulated to think that is a good idea. Yeah. The fact that he's on TV every day, the fact that he's in the headlines every day, the fact that he's on social media every day. Yeah, he would be a good president. Mm -hmm. This shit really has turned into a bad popularity contest. Yeah, it really has. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a cool it was a cool piece. It was cool to see people react to it, man. Like I feel like it really penetrated, and um, yeah, it was, it's really just interesting. The idea that we just want to be entertained at the end of the day, and when you want to yes. be entertained, that's what you get. When you reward the thing you want, that's what you're gonna get. If you wanted seriousness all the time, you'd have a serious fucking president. But we we want to be entertained all the time. We want some goofy motherfuckers out there, whether it be a rapper. Or our president saying goofy shit the whole time. And we act like we don't like it, but we keep watching, so we must love it. Yeah. And I think the other thing to take away from what you said for me is like, yo, everybody's not qualified for everything. It was a certain part of the uh it was a certain part of 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 of, of the rant. I don't, I don't, we I don't basically know what we basically uh went through um I basically was like, hey, look, it's not just Trump, right? You know, or Trump is an anomaly. I go, Trump is an anomaly. You know, like if you're going to critique people. the country and, and, and have things to say about the country, you should at least be from here. And then you posted John Oliver and yeah. Trevor Noah. And it was, um, uh, man, it was a few of those. Basically, you did. the idea was 
everybody it's it's not crazy that clout puts you in that position and that you don't yes. necessarily need experience you just need clout and we we're like yes. all these people that have an alcohol brand that don't know anything about alcohol from diddy yes. to conor mcgregor none of them know anything about alcohol but they got clout so we'll drink their alcohol right and we we're talking about like you got to be a lawyer to get people out of jail right and then kim kardashian comes up right so it's like all these people are doing these things and they have no expertise in the field whatsoever because we stop valuing expertise we value entertainment so the Absolutely. more entertaining Goddamn you movie. are, the more we're going to put in front of you, man. And that's why so many celebrities thought that they could run for president after Donald Trump. 100%. The Rock thinks he president. can run for president because he drives that's, cars fast. That's whack. Like, that's like, honestly, that's whack. Like, the, that, that means the bar is so fucking low. That's why I maintain that they have to change the laws for how you're able to be president, meaning that you have to have some type of experience in politics, though. Like it makes no sense. Like you have to have experience in politics. That's the highest seat in the fucking land. You should not be able to just walk in and say you want to run for president just because you have money, just because you have somebody back in your campaign. Like, no, man, yeah. you should you should have had had to been mayor. Yeah. Governor, you know, served on the Senate, the Senate of something like yeah. you had to have some type of qualifications. You can't be an executive producer, celebrity apprentice. And by the way, there is no when you, when people have, used to ask me. Well, what about Oprah? No, there's nobody. You, you can't even make it a black or white thing. There's nobody black you could come to me with who was not a politician. Right. Right. That I would say, yes, they should run the fucking White House. Yeah. No, no, nah, that's not how this shit works, man. It's yeah. not how it works. Like I even saw Hollywood Unlocked to the point you made in the video. And I love Hollywood Unlocked. Salute to my guy, Jason Lee. They put up a, a post and it said the White House is allowing one person to speak to Trump on behalf of the black community. Who would you choose to take this on? They have eight people, right? Yeah. Number one. Rachel Dolezal. Charlemagne the God. Close. Right. Very close. Very <laughs> close. Right? Number two. Amanda Seals. Number three. Colin Kaepernick. Number four. Kim Kardashian. Number five. Kanye West. Number six. Angela Rye, number seven, Don Lemon, number eight, 50 fucking cent. Ask me who on this list would I want to speak on behalf of the black community? Who? Two people on this list. Everybody else can get the fuck out of here. Amanda cent. Seals and Angela oh. Rye. Okay. Okay. Not a, nobody okay. else on this list should be sitting down having a conversation with Donald Trump Can on behalf I ask of the you black a question? community. Why is yes. it that you believe only light skinned black women deserve an opinion? Well, that's on this list. If Nina Turner was on this list, <laughs> I would say, and by the way, <laughs> Nina Turner's not on this list, but that's somebody who I would send to go talk on behalf of the black community. Right. You know why? Senator Nina Turner. Right. Beautiful dark skinned black woman, right? I'm if, teasing, if obviously. About, uh, I know. Uh, but, uh, I know what I'm yeah. but she she's a senator. She mm -hmm. knows policy. She knows legislation and she knows the black community. Now, there's not one person who can speak on behalf of the black community because black people are not monolithic. But my whole point is. You know what? Say I, I got to take all, I, I'm, I'm about to take all of this back because there's one thing that makes everybody on this list qualified. They're black. No, we're talking to fucking Trump. We're talking to the former executive producer, celebrity apprentice. Can I, all he all he understands is the kind of conversation we would bring. Can I can I make a point? Because I've thought about this a little bit, which is yeah. um, especially with everything going on with Corona. I think that what's been exposed with Corona is that experts in their field aren't necessarily the best communicators of their expertise. Right. So a doctor, my buddy was telling me he works for an NBA team and he asked the doctor, he goes, OK, what's up with the uh, player's ankle? And the doctor goes, well, he has a fusion of the joint, blah, blah, blah. And my buddy's like, well, what is that? He goes, I oh, said it was a sprained ankle. He goes, so why the fuck you tell me it was a sprained ankle? Because experts wor uh, work within their vacuum, right? Yeah. Communicators are experts at communication. And one thing that we've gotten from Corona is a lot of confusing information. Is like, does a mask work? Does a mask not work? What? How, can you use your shirt as a mask? Can, no, there's only one mask. Work. There's so much confusing information that's going on. I think what will come out of this is somebody that is a professional communicator for the med medical field. And that's where 
I feel like the people that you listed have a lot of value to Trump or whoever the president is because you guys are master communicators. So it's like you might have a feeling as a black person, right? But if you can't accurately communicate that to a white guy, an Asian guy, whoever the fuck, even even black people, that feeling doesn't have as much value on the marketplace. Does that make sense? You're right. No, you're absolutely right. That's why any any president other than Trump, that's why I would send I would send Angela Rye. You could send Angela, Angela, you could send whoever, but like for me, I'm actually for me, I'm actually having you sit down with the black economists that talk about the things happening in the black community. And then the economists tell you these things and then you go, OK, bet. I know how to make it uh, digestible I, I, to the people. I, you feel me? I, w- I would bring the economists with me because one thing I hate to do is explain smart shit. But you people. know how to make shit digestible, right? The economists yeah. are going to make it fucking boring. Like one of the valuable things about a guy like Malcolm Gladwell is he could take boring shit that's information that everybody knows, some like yeah. pop science, if you will, and then he can make it digestible for guys like me and you. Right. I've read all those reports, like everything that Gladwell talks about. I learned in Psych 101 in school. Right. Like literally every single study he references, all that shit, Psych 101. And anybody listening right now that had Psych 101, they heard them all as well. But he finds a fun, exciting way to repackage these studies. I agree with you. But what you're talking about is communication to the regular everyday person. If I'm going to the White House to talk to a president. Fair like, enough. You need the experts it, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, not, not Trump, though. Trump is an exception to this rule. Doesn't matter. But Let's, if, any president yeah, but, doesn't matter. But if I was going to talk to Barack Obama or who was another president who had a very high IQ that was on record having a high IQ? Um, George Bush. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Abraham, like, Lincoln. People, Abraham Lincoln. Smart guy. Okay. Yes, FDR. I would take, I would take other well-educated, Yo. smart people because they speak the same language. How about this? You're actually there as the communication device of the president. So really, the economists come in and they sit down with you and the president. And then afterwards, you and the president go, OK, how do we want to communicate this message? It's no different than like what happens here in my business. It's like we create a piece of content, right? And then mm-hmm. me, Mark and Alex will sit down and we'll be like, what is the best way to communicate the title of this? To make it the most attractive. What's the best picture we should use? What is the best way to to like put together a narrative around this? And I feel like if you're a person that's done media, especially radio, you understand the crafting of narratives, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, Trump, or let's say it's Abraham Lincoln is sitting down with you. You know, <laughs> probably wouldn't be happening, but, <laughs> but that'd be amazing. <laughs> but they basically be like, okay, how do we how do we get the most people to understand this? FDR goes, okay, we want to get into World War II. Charlemagne, how do we get all these Germans and Irish Americans, sorry, German and Italian Americans to support America when we're going to be going to war against their cousins? Charlemagne, how do we fucking do that shit? Yeah, I, you know, I, listen, I, I agree with you for the most part. I, it's weird, right, when you're creating shit because I don't ever want to create anything and, 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 and have to... It's not dumbing it down. Dumbing it down is not the right word. But sometimes you, when people say things to you, like, for example, I'm writing a new book and it's a certain chapter in the book that I wrote. And they was like, well, can you um, can you can you broaden it out to women as well? And I'm like, no, I can't. Sometimes you got to speak to who you got to speak to. Exactly. I'm talking to black men in this moment. Yep. Like I'm, this, this, I'm not broadening this out for women. This is not about women, but I can guarantee you this. Yep. Women will read that and give it to their boyfriends. They'll, they'll read that and say, did you see what Charlemagne said mm. he does with his wife? Mm. I don't like to preach to people. I don't think that you should preach to people. I think that you should tell people your experiences and what works for you mm. and why you think it works for you and get the fuck out the way. bro. Now, you can recommend it and say, I think that you should this is something I think you should do because this worked for me. We, we, we always talk about this, right? It's like we know how to create content that's going to have the most overall gravity, right? We know like the formula of a piece that's going to bring the most people in, right? But that mm-hmm. might not be the authentic thing that we want to create and we want to share, right? So it's like mm. I feel like what you're saying is you got to put pieces out that gravitate the people that you're speaking to, right? And if the piece is quality and the piece is good those people will find out about it 
right? Absolutely. If you're true to yourself and you're authentic in your feeling and who Absolutely. you're speaking to, if the gravity will be strong within that, we can all make a video where some fat person falls and then like a pizza falls on them and then their hair lights on fire. That's going to get a zillion views on YouTube, a zillion views on Facebook, etc. But maybe you don't want to speak to a zillion people. Maybe you got a specific group that you want to tap into. Yes. And you will do that if you speak authentically and intelligently yes. to them. To, to, to your, because all I'm doing is speaking authentically and intelligently to your my perspective. experiences. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, by, by the way, that's all I got. I try to tell people that all the time. Like, all a person has is their POV, their perspective. One of the illest things me and Malcolm Gladwell ever talked about, and I think he might have said it on Brain Idiots podcast, right. but he was like, yo, I asked him how much of, you know, his old rhetoric does he still believe? Right. And he was like, probably none of it. Uh, and I, I was like, what? Like, that shit broke my heart until yeah. he explained. He was like, that's where I was when I wrote that book. Right. Me personally, I've elevated to a different level of consciousness. I have a different level of information. So I'm on something else. Like Malcolm Gladwell's latest work that he presented to us was Talking to Strangers, which was an amazing read, right? It's not that he doesn't believe in what he wrote in the outliers anymore or what he wrote in David Goliath anymore. It's just that his information has evolved. Mm. So he's on something else. But guess what? The beautiful thing about books is all of those books will impact somebody where they are at some point in their life. Mm. If you're a 20 year old and you go read the outliers, it's going to hit you the way it hit me when I read it back in the day. doesn't matter if, if, if Malcolm doesn't feel like that anymore, right. that information will still meet you where you are yeah. at whatever stage you're at in your life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. And that's because, that's because Malcolm wrote from his experiences. Right. Now, imagine if Malcolm, imagine if Malcolm was the type of person who didn't acquire any new information, didn't, you know, learn anything new and said to himself, well, fuck it. The book company just wanted other outliers. I know how to get people in. Right. I gave you $10,000 last time. Let me give you 20000 this time. That shit ain't going to work. And it, and it doesn't work. We see it happen all the time, right? Where they're like, they force in a narrative. They force in a narrative for the women watching. They force in a uh, diversity, right? But the diversity doesn't reflect the culture. It just reflects the color. Bro, right? Um, 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 Robert, Green, Robert Green wrote a book called The Mastery. Okay. Um, it's called, it was called the, yeah, it was the Mastery. And basically, The Mastery was... The outliers. And I, I know, and I love Robert Greene as an author, right? But I, I know that he would probably hear this and think different. But mastery was basically, instead of 10,000 hours, it was like 20,000 or 30,000. It was, it was a certain amount of hours where you become a master at something. And I'm like, I read this already. Right. You know what I mean? So he just, he basically took that concept and had his own perspective to it. Yeah. But I wasn't really interested. There's a there's a saying, um, people don't have ideas, ideas have people. Mm. And uh, yeah, Malcolm Gladwell did not invent the idea of working a long time at something and then you get better at it, mm. right? He just had the best phrase for it, the 10,000 hour rule, right? Yes. And sometimes yes. when you market something the best, it becomes synonymous with what you are. Hey, pass me a Kleenex. That shit ain't a Kleenex, that's the brand. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So tissue, uh, tissue already existed. Exa tissue been around. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that shit happens, but that's the beauty of marketing, man. And that's the beauty of like getting your message out in the most clear way possible is that you could fucking own the space and you could own yeah. that message for a, a little bit of time in history. I bet a hundred years ago, there was some other guy like, yo, work really hard at something for this many hours. You're going to get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Tesla, Nikola Tesla was a fucking scientist, bro. Now it's an electric car. Shit changes. Bro, that's the only constant in life. Right? The only, <laughs> the only constant in life is fucking change. And the right message, though, will continue. Like, uh, listen, I've, I've read parts of the Bible, right? There's a reason why these stories continue to be passed down throughout history, man. It's because there's some slap. fucking, there's some slappers in there, bro. Now, I, think I was, I, I can't, I was using Noah this week. What'd you say? I was saying how, you know, in a way, Noah was fucking quarantined, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Him yeah, yeah. and his family yeah. and then penguins he might have been fucking, they was all in that goddamn ark. Yeah. And they, and, and, and when they finally parked. Yeah. 
No, it didn't just rush out that ark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Noah sent a goddamn raven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he sent a motherfucking dove. And when the dove came back with some grass in his mouth, Noah Sorry. realized, okay, the water must have fucking uh, receded. And we're ready to go. And we're ready to get back out there. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about this quarantine shit. So you're going to let some other people dabble. I am not a dove, beloved. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I am not a fucking dove, beloved. Right. I am not going out there first. Yeah. I'll let y'all be the dove. All you ravens, all the ravens are clearly in Florida. Yeah. Right? Those, are, those, are, those are dog fucking birds. All the dog birds clearly in Florida. The right. doves are in California. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And when the doves fly, then the prince, is in the, the prince will come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when if the when the doves fly, when the doves cry, whatever the fuck, yeah. whatever the fuck, Prince was saying, mm-hmm. the Prince will come. Mm-hmm. All right, that's that. I but, I, but, you, to, to, but but to your point, just to put a button on what we were saying, because I truly agree with this. We have gotten to a point in our life where it's a lot of unqualified people talking about things they're not qualified to talk about. Ourselves included. We do a podcast. Our, 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 ourselves included. But we call our podcast the brilliant idiots. We're not. Yeah, we're not pretending to be qualified. And that is the at, difference. At all. Yes. We, we're smart, dumb shit. Even when, even when they bring me on MSNBC, CNN, whatever, whatever. I'm not up there acting like a political pundit. Yeah. I'm speaking my perspective yes. on how I see the world. Yes. How I see politics yes that's it it's not no i don't have a party uh, you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm 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 very i'm very you know bipartisan no what the fuck see i don't know what the fuck i'm talking yeah, about bipartisan Bi- yeah i'm very bipartisan or you're non-partisan I don't have, like you don't I'm, i don't care yeah, like, yeah, yeah i don't i don't i don't claim republican i don't claim democrat i am just a person who has an opinion on on life mm-hmm. and on politics and you know different social justice issues that's it mm-hmm. i've never claimed to be an expert you know, you talk to me about mental health. Hey, you want to call me a mental health advocate? Cool. I'm only speaking from my experiences and what I've been through. Dude, That's I, it. I was looking up uh, just like the history of news a little bit. And um, apparently like back in the day, like a long time ago, like 1800s, man, um, the publishers of newspapers, their political biases were very known. Like you, you read a newspaper from this guy, whoever it was, right? And you were mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, that's his side. He's a Democrat or this guy is a Republican or whatever it is. Right. Like, but it was very note. So you looked at the information, not as completely unbiased truth and facts, but a newspaper that had this left leading slant that fed this community. Right. Something happened, I think, in like the 70s where news with bias turned into, hey, here are just the facts. And that's the problem. Like when you have a Fox News or CNN going, guys, we just do the facts, but there's clearly yeah, a slant. Yeah. Now you're misleading. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they yeah, just came yeah, out and they were yeah. like, yo, we're the left wing news. And Fox was like, yo, we're the right wing news. It would be okay if they made all the arguments for their people and the same people would watch, but at least it wouldn't seem disingenuous. I agree you with you 100%. And, I, and by the way, that's, I watch it all. You have but, to. But, you but, have but, to. I, but I have the wherewithal to know this is left leaning. This is right leaning. Right. I, I I still think that the only place you can get a sense of moderation, but I don't even. It's been weird since he's been on quarantine. Bill Maher. Yeah. But but that's only because Bill Maher has his POV, mm-hmm. and he brings other people on to express their POV. So all POVs are represented. Yep. Conservatives are represented. Liberals are represented. You know. Uh, independents are represented like all parties are represented and 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 i think as long as you do that you're fine like because it, it's impossible to be all things to all people right yeah and you don't have to right because this is what happened when we started releasing these pieces like the one we were talking about before we released four of them right what we realized was yo it's the vocal minority like the minority of people on the left and the right that make up what the left and the right think but the majority of us are actually Moderates. Moderate, and I even, I don't even like the word moderate because it sounds so stupid. Like nobody defines himself as moderate. Is your kid handsome? He's moderately handsome. Like it's just stupid, right? Like I call myself medium ugly. <laughs> I'm right down the middle. I think I'm right down the line. But the reality is, right, we're all medium ugly or medium cute, right? We're yeah, just yeah, we're, yeah. we're right in the middle. So like 
when we started doing these pieces, the idea was, yo, there is no political slant. We are writing the funnest, the funniest piece and taking the funniest angle and giving some truth in that, regardless if it if it slants left or right, it doesn't matter. And what we realize is when you do that, you actually don't move to the left or right that much. You stay in the middle, which most people are. And the craziest things happen is we have both sides right? We have both sides commenting and enjoying the pieces because they feel reflected in the piece because they're actually not that extreme left or right in the first place. The best part about people in the middle is that I think that people in the middle are willing to think. They're willing to change their mind. I think that's why that's why hypothetical swing voters is so important because you could say something, you could give them some bit of information that might actually sway them either to the left or to the right. I think what you do in those pieces it's like if you're a thinking person, you got to watch that and be like, that's pretty accurate. That's if, it. If, if, if you know both parties. If you're willing to accept the reality, and I think most people yeah. are rational, most people are reasonable, especially if you listen to this podcast, like over the last five years, we've probably been the most truly honest about every single issue, you know, for better or for worse. But like literally, I don't know on a major platform, anybody who's been as honest as us, the conversations we've had about like really harsh fucking topics. You know? To our own detriment. For 100%. It's just, it's just the reality of it, bro. It's, it's so cool it to like just create a piece. And like, to be honest, like we're in this cool position where there are people on the right to fuck with me. There are people on the left to fuck with me so that when we create the piece, you know, it's authentic. When somebody on The Daily Show makes a piece, anybody on the right is like, okay, here comes the slander of us. When SNL makes a piece, anybody on the right is like, here comes the slander of us, right? Bill Maher is a little bit more to the middle, but he's still not fully to the middle. So we just, we just entered this space with confidence from both sides and then everybody going, oh shit, yeah, this is reasonable. Oh, we are uh, yeah. not that far apart. It is not that fucking extreme. That's why I love, and you don't see it too often, but I love personalities who aren't afraid to change their mind. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like if I got a guest on and me and a guest are talking and we're debating and a guest says something that makes me think or makes me actually change my opinion, I don't have a problem saying that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's healthy conversation. But yep. so we, live in, we live in this era. Once again, social media, it's all about the clout. It's all about the attention. You got to debate. It got to be a versus. It got to be a fight. You know what I mean? It got to <laughs> yeah. be me versus them, yeah. us versus they. Like, fuck all of that. Like, let's have a conversation. Because and in, 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 I don't care what nobody said. If you're sitting down with a very intelligent person or you're sitting down with somebody who has different experiences than you, you should walk away learning something. Whether you agree with it or not, right. you should have just learned something fucking new. Like, yeah. it's in, if, if you're sitting down talking to people and like, you don't feel like that person made a point, you, you're wasting your time. Like you yeah. wasted whatever time, you wasted whatever conversation you was having. Yeah. I don't feel like there's nobody you should talk to who doesn't have at least one point. Now, if you're sitting down just to argue with people, yeah, you're going to walk away and say, that motherfucker didn't know what he was talking about. Uh. It had no point, but yeah. if you're sitting down to actually sit down and have a conversation with somebody and exchange ideas, you should walk away feeling like you learned something. Yeah, I agree. Or else you kind of mm-hmm. wasted some time. I'm gonna uh, go take a piss and then um, knock out some. Uh, wait, did we deep dive? Was that the deep dive? That, I think that was the deep dive. We can come back and do fucking uh, shit you won't care about next week. Let me go All piss. Right, me too. All right, uh, we got any church announcement shows? Actually, weirdly, yeah. Okay, um, talk to me. Uh, well, one, we put out those, uh, the rants that we've been doing, we just call the show Schultz every Saturday. So you can check that on my Instagram or YouTube or all those things. But, um, but yeah, I'm doing a show in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, but not till October, but the tickets went on sale today. So yesterday, by the time you guys are listening to this. And, um, so if you're in Fargo, I believe it's Fargo. Yeah, we're going to do it. And we're starting to like release some tickets for shows that are going to happen in fall i'm ready to get back out there man and also also if there's a comedy club that's open you know next month i'm down to come and support you know i want to i want to reward the people who are willing to you know open back up let's crack this bitch back open let's get back on stage man we gotta get back to a normal life sooner or later i think it's important uh are you gonna um, call your next that. tour mask on or mask off oh mask off man future we're not playing games mask off okay mm-hmm. all right 100 percent Listen, uh, I don't have no fucking church announcements. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing when this shit is over. But um, shit you won't care about next week. 
Well, you know what? Go yeah, go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash C to God, C T H A G O G. Yeah, what is Joe interviews. Rogan gonna do with all his YouTube followers? So uh he's keeping the clips channel, my understanding, and then the video will go to Spotify, but uh they'll continue to put clips up on the YouTube page. So Is he I, allowed to put clips up on the YouTube page? Yeah, yeah, that's what he was saying. And I think that oh, wow, that's wow, actually wow. great because it's promo. It's like the Clips channel. It's promo, Like yeah. We got a Clips channel, Brilliant Idiots Clips. You can go on YouTube right now. That's where the Takashi thing with Sharla uh, is up. But like for me, the way I look at the Clips channel is that's for the casual fan. That's for someone who they might fuck with me or they might fuck with you independently. And then they're like, oh, shit, they do a podcast together? Oh, shit, these are kind of dope. All right, where's the full episode? And then you go to the regular channel. So I look at the Clips channel like, you know, billboards on the highway. Let's put as many of those as we possibly can out all throughout YouTube. So if I'm Spotify, I'm like, please keep doing the clips. Pretty yeah, yeah, please, because yeah. that's free oh. promo for us. Yeah, I mean, for somebody like Rogan, if you do a three-hour podcast, 15 minutes ain't shit. 20 minutes ain't shit to give away. Even if you gave <laughs> away all three hours in clips, eventually people are like, all right, bro, I want to just have one place I can watch it. I don't want to be bouncing in between clips and then searching for the next one on YouTube because it might not be the next one that comes out. You know, like... Yeah, and I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense because uh, Joe Biden does that. So that makes sense. Right, right. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah, right, I think shit it's you great. Won't care. You say what? No, I just think it's great. I just think it, you know, I think it's great. But shit you won't care about next uh, week. What you thinking, bro? Uh, Paul Pierce said LeBron James is not a top five NBA player of all time. I mean, all right, Paul. I mean, I don't know. Yo, Paul Pierce was so good as a player, and he's the perfect example of, like, when you become so unlikable as, as like, a commentator, how it can tarnish your legacy as a player. Like people forget about that. Like who you are after, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like who you are after, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Kenny Smith was a mediocre player, but since he's so famous as a broadcaster yeah. in his post career, you think that he carried the Rockets to them championships, yeah, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. He got two rings. He's a, he, 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 was he, why Kenny, Kenny a Hall of Famer? Not even close. Not no, even no, no, cl- I'm not talking about stat wise. I'm saying, is he? He's a Hall of Fame broadcaster, but not even. Oh no, no, no! He's not a. No, he's not a Hall, he's of, not Fame. Hall of Fame. But okay. we look at his career through rose-colored glasses because of how amazing his post career has been. Whereas, like you look at like a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and apparently, you know, not that many people like him. Apparently, he's a dick. I've never met him, so I can't say. But apparently, he's a dick, and I think because of that, it tarnishes his re- his reputation a bit as a player because he was unstoppable. Yeah, you can't call me a dick when I'm 97, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't like that like don't do that to people like that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is about to be 103 years old you can't call him a dick he's just old yeah yeah he ain't got, he ain't got time for your bullshit like yeah. think, 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 think about that you're Kareem Abdul-Jabbar right yeah you've been alive six centuries at least yeah yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. and you got motherfuckers running up to you wanting to take selfies yeah. Number one, you don't know what the fuck a selfie is. Yeah. Number two, you're tall as shit. You so people down. are doing like this. And I'm like, man, you ain't got time for that shit. Your fucking back hurt. You know what I'm saying? You done played 37 NBA seasons. Yeah. Don't, don't call. Don't, don't say Kareem's a dick. He's old. He ain't got time for your shit. Yeah, He's that. earned the right to be a curmudgeon. That's the problem with Black Don't Crack is that you might see a black dude as being a dick and you don't realize he's old. Word up. And guess what? If you meet an old black person or old white person and they're not being a dick, it's because they can't hear you. <laughs> exactly. They <laughs> would They would be a dick if they knew what you were saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so that's what I think. Cap. I just think it's his post-career is like really going to tarnish how fucking amazing he was. He was amazing, Paul Pierce. He yeah, was Paul amazing. Was Dude, those Lakers series when he was going at Kobe, giving Kobe the fucking work. By the way, I'm not mad if you don't put LeBron on your top five, though. It's not crazy. I do, oh. but it's not crazy. It's not. It's not. I, I mean, I don't even know who his top five is. I would have to look and see who his top five is. But it's not like a nut ass take to me. You usually, know what I'm saying? Usually you you probably you don't put people on your top five that, that you've beaten. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's hard mm. to put someone on your top five that you've beaten personally because you're like, well, shit, if he's on the top five, where the fuck am I? I beat him. Yeah, if you put it like this, you can't be um, you can't be more outraged that Paul Pierce didn't put LeBron on his top five, but not be outraged if 
Bill Lambert, Isaiah Thomas says Michael's not the greatest basketball player of all. Time. Right, right. Because you know they saying? were like, they were giving Michael the work. Yeah, everybody everybody has a take. I'm not mad at that. Like, yeah, shit. If I'm being objective, I'll put LeBron in my top five. But if you ask me personally, I'm not sure I would. Yeah, my top five is Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, rest God bless the dead, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Allen Iverson. But that's just my personal. Top five. Now, I'm sure some people will look at some of those people I put in there and they might have two of them in their top five, three of them. Some might have one. But for me personally, that's my personal top five greatest players I've ever seen. This is my top five. And I I haven't seen some of these guys play extensively. So it's hard. It's almost like a bullshit take in a lot of ways. But like, uh, I got to go Michael Jordan. I got to go uh, LeBron James. Um... I got to go Bill Russell just because he's the most winning, you know, he's the winningest player of all time. Um, I guess Kobe's in there. Maybe Kobe's gotta, in there. Got to put Kobe in there, bro. Yeah. I was never a big Kobe guy. I was never a big Kobe guy, man. I, I thought he was cool, but I was never a big Kobe guy. I understood he was great, but he didn't do it for me. The MJ um, Doc makes me appreciate Kobe more. Say again? The MJ doc makes me appreciate yeah, Kobe. Yeah, because you see MJ in Kobe. Yeah, and, and for you to be able to emulate Michael Jordan and do it as well as Kobe Bryant did. Yeah. Yeah, he was great. He was all time. He was he's 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 a great bro. I'd probably have to put Magic or Bird in there, man. You got to. Yeah, I think that's probably it's gonna be like Jordan, uh Bill Russell, Braun, Magic Bird. I think that's probably top five for me. And I'm not mad at none of that. Yeah. Like none of that shit makes me like, oh shit, nah. Like no, that's like, all right. Yeah, it's tricky, man. It's tricky. And LeBron got a, he got a, listen. LeBron is already a legend. He's a goat. Can't take none of that away from him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if if Paul Pierce don't want him in his top five, Paul Pierce it's don't not want him the craziest thing. Yeah, it's not the craziest thing. It's just kind of wild though. Like Paul Pierce is in nobody's top five. Yeah, that's the only that's that's gonna be the counter argument. Yeah, but. But that doesn't matter. He's still a basketball player, a basketball fan. If you ask him that question, he has the right to rank it. Yeah. Um, things you won't care about next week. Horace Grant said that the MJ doc is not accurate. He said that uh, Michael lied about the fact that Horace Grant leaked information to Sam Smith in the Jordan Rules book. He also said that uh, Michael edited the documentary to make it seem like, you know, nobody ever pushed back against him. Nobody ever stepped to him. And he was like, Michael stepped to me a couple of times and I pushed back. And he said, Michael's just holding a grudge with this documentary. He said, he said, when you, he said, if you say something about Michael, he's going to cut you off. He's going to try to destroy your character. All of this seems completely reasonable after watching the documentary. I mean, do you think otherwise? You think it's possible um, he would I, hold I, a grudge? I, like I, I think that I think Horace might have been a little. I mean, I, I listened to the interview that he did. Uh, it was a phone interview. I think Horace might have been a little off, only because Horace did get to express his perspective in the documentary. Horace did get to tell us that I never fucking gave no information to Sam Smith. I would never do that. It's not like that wasn't in the doc. Maybe they you know cut out. Maybe they cut out times where Horace was like, I mean, yeah, he. You know, Jordan walked over the people that let him walk um, uh, walk over him, or that allowed Jordan to walk over them, whoever that sentence is structured. Maybe. But, Maybe. like, he didn't walk over me. You know, I punched him right back in the face, blah, blah, blah. Maybe. But even, even with that, when you say, um, you know, he says things like, oh, you know, Jordan only, I think Horace said something to the fact of Jordan only showed you, you know, people that, you know, he could push over, basically. All that punching people in the face, that was unnecessary. But I'm like... He didn't have to tell those stories. He had to tell you that Steve Kerr punched him in the chest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean. It's not like, I, I don't think Jordan made himself to be a hero in this movie. It wasn't like Dr. Dre in the NWA movie. He didn't care to be a hero. He actually was fine being the villain. He just wanted motherfuckers to know what he did to win those championships and how that's different it. he was than everyone else. He is I, different than LeBron. That's right. That's right. And I thought that was yep. effective. And at the end of the day, if you win... We can forgive you for being an asshole. Winning will make you forgive everything. 
If you're a loser and you're an asshole, you're Chris Paul, right? Nobody wants to yes. play with them. You're not good enough to be a dick. Jordan was good enough to be a dick. Jordan was good enough to punch you in the face and you still show up to practice next day like, yo, my bad, Mike. Next time I'm going to try to avoid your fist, you know? I I get it. Like, I don't know. I mean, Hor listen, and by the way, Horace Grant was there. So, you know, if Horace Grant says some of that shit wasn't real, you got to listen, right? Yeah. Horace allows to have his but, opinion, too. We just don't care yeah. about it. Cause you never won without care. Mike. We don't give. Listen, How many rings you win Horace, without Mike, Horace? Salute to the OG Horace Grant. Don't nobody give up. One, one without Mike. Say what? He was on the. He got a ring with the Lakers. Oh, no, he, he did? didn't. Horace Grant. Pretty sure the year that they played Philly, I was just watching one of the games. Oh, I forgot shit. about it, but he was on the Lakers that year. My bad. Look All right, so up. you got one without Mike. Maybe you no, could talk. No, no, no. I gotta look that up first. Let's make sure. Cause I remember, I don't remember. Even, I don't even remember Horace playing for. The I didn't remember it either. It shocked nah, me when I saw him. Alex just looked it up. Oh no, nah, he did. He did. Two thousand and one. Two thousand one. Alex looked it up. He said, "Yeah, 91, 92, 93, and oh one. Yeah. Wow. All right. We'll salute to Horace Grant. Um, things you won't give a fuck about next week. What uh, else? You think? What else we got in here? We talked about Takashi wanting to expose Billboard. Nobody gave a fuck. I mean, is I that is that true? I, I, like. How does that work? What are your thoughts on that? Basically, um, Takashi was saying that like um did Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber purchased their streams like on six credit cards or something like that at the last minute and Bieber and Ariana Grande were basically saying, "No, we just hold our numbers until the day before and then we present them to Billboard." So it looked like it yeah. was all last minute, but in reality we had them waiting. I enjoyed um, Scooter Braun's commentary because Scooter Braun is a manager. Yeah. Um, I'm always interested in the executive. And Scooter Braun basically said the same thing. He said it's strategy. He said they don't release their numbers early in the week. They don't give a fuck about projections and all of that stuff like that. He said they wait. Because, you know, you get you get money for those number ones. Like if you get a number one single and stuff like that, you get bonuses and all that. For sure. Of stuff. Um, but Scooter said something I found interesting. Scooter said that there was an investigation done by Billboard. Right. Um, but the investigation was... Uh, on a video that was getting six times the bot activity, the bot bot activity as other videos. And which video was that? I mean, it seemed like he was alluding to uh, Young Takash. Whoa! Yeah. So I mean, that's that was that was more interesting to me. But either way, right? They're both accusing each other of doing the same shit. Mm. <laughs> like, 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 they, like he's accusing them of manipulating Billboard. And, you know, that was what, what Scooter said in his post was uh, uh, alluding to the fact that he was manipulating YouTube. So who the fuck knows, man? Yeah. This shit. Like, who cares? Like, I, I didn't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. I'm yeah, I was just, of, I, yeah, just, I was just let down by Takashi crying. Like, you have to be funny in these moments, bro. You have to be funny. That's what we like. We like it when you're funny. We like it when you don't care. The reason why we love the Breakfast Club video is because it seemed like every rapper that goes on Breakfast Club is like either paranoid, petrified. And then when Takashi went on, it was like, all right, I don't give a fuck. I'm here. I'll say whatever. Yeah. And it was yeah. it was interesting to see. It's like, how could you not be more nervous being on the biggest platform in music? Like, how could you not be more nervous? Yeah. And now all of a sudden, if he came on Breakfast Club and he was crying, oh, oh they're trying to take it away from me. Oh, 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 oh. We'd be like, man, shut up. Like, we don't care. Well, that's be how funny, he was bro. the second time. Say again? That's how he was the second time. Hmm. I wonder the second interview. Yeah, the second time was about, you know, how he cut off his crew and yada, yada, yada. He's not in that life, that type of shit. But Ah, yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. But that I'm was also him. right when they scooped him up, right? So it was like. Right, right, were, uh, 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 he got scooped up after the day after. Yeah, so it was like things were hot right then, and we were like, "Wait, what's going on? What, what's what exactly happening?" I just like his use of the word investigation. In that what? Voice. It just sounded dope. What he say? We launched an investigation. It's like, God damn, you ain't tired of investigating yet? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you not tired of being the catalyst for investigations yet? <laughs> what the fuck, my guy. <laughs> um, let's do some asking idiot Taylor. What asking idiot said? Tay Tay. Young Chunk. We can't hear you. You're not going to call me Young Chunk. Try it. <laughs> um, it's broken. <laughs> oh, 
Kayla. Scroll down. I'm scrolling. Okay, okay I see him. I see him. All right. Uh, ask an idiot. Ask an idiot. Uh, let's see. Let's see. At Milton says, why won't I allow my wife to shave my own head? No, he said, why won't I shave my own head or allow my wife to do it? It's not that serious to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a person that enjoys the barbershop experience. Um, I enjoy, you know, sitting in the barber chair. You know, my dude, Ty, is a beast. You know, he makes you feel really at home. He makes you feel comfortable. I enjoy that's, That is a form of self-care for me. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, shaving my own head would feel like work. Mm. Um, having my wife shave my own head would be torture. Why would I do that to her? You know what I'm saying? Like, for what? Like, like seriously, ladies, Taylor, answer this question. Okay. Would you let your boyfriend give you a wax? No. Would you let your boyfriend shave your, your vagina hair off? If I was, like, pregnant and I couldn't reach it, then yeah. Okay, extreme circumstance. <laughs> all right, but just for the hell of it? No, I'll be all right. It's just a fucking haircut. Who cut your hair? You, you say somebody cut your hair, Schultz. Did they take proper precautions? Uh, nah, not really. <laughs> okay. I just came over and cut my hair. I'm with us, my guy Alex, man. He always cuts my hair, and now he's back in town. He was in like uh, Maryland or some shit for the quarantine. The second he got back, I was like, "Yo, we're doing this." Came out to the studio, bang. I'm not mad, bang, at bro. <laughs> that feels great. I feel like a new man. I'm fucking ready. Um, so I- asking too, Charlemagne, I mean, because you keep saying how you need a haircut, so they're saying, "Why don't you just shave it off?" Because mm. I need a haircut. Not a self shave. No, that's a good point. Like you have the easiest haircut to administer. Like Not you could have been giving long. yourself a haircut. My hair too long at this point. Right, right. What else um, we got, Taylor? A underscore Jackson Life Seventeen says if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which one would you keep? Which ones would you keep? Uh, which three? Which three? Uh, Instagram, YouTube. Uber. Ooh. Um, yeah, I probably keep Instagram. Instagram, Uber. Shit, that's about it. Or like it's either no, nah, it's YouTube because YouTube you can get the podcasts and you can get videos. But uh okay. yeah, I need I need content. I need to some way to like that's indulge in long term Instagram, content. Instagram, Uber, and the podcast app for Apple. That's what I would Bang, keep. done. Next. All right, uh, Doc, Dr. Black Falcon says, since this is Mental Health Awareness Month, what are the top five books you would recommend? Um, I would recommend The Unapologetic Guide to Black Mental Health by Dr. Rita Walker. Mm. Amazing book. Um, salute, to, salute to Dr. Rita Walker, too. She was sold out like everywhere, everywhere online, like, la- or, like the week her book dropped. I think this is the second week her book came out. Um, but, you know, salute to her. Grab that unapologetic guide to black mental health. Um, I'm reading Deepak Chopra, Meta Human right now. Really, really, really good read. It's just about how the next level of, you know, human life, the next level of human lo- evolution will all be about your mental and your emotional and your consciousness and your awareness. Um, uh, four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I think that uh, those four agreements can really help you right now with your anxiety. Um, I would get you the seven spiritual laws of success by Deepak Chopra because law number six definitely could help you with any anxiety you might be feeling or any, you know, anything you might be going through on, on, the, on, the, on the mental health part, anxiety, depression, mm. you know, those four. I said four. What would be the fifth one? I don't know. The Quran. Nah, Quran going to scare the shit out you. Um, I don't know. I would go with I would go with those four. Really, I would really just start with the unapologetic guy. Well, I guess I would say Shook One. Shook One. Yeah. By Charlemagne the God. That's a that's a good one to read during mental health awareness month. He's pretty good. Uh Liv Livid Impala says, no sex or no haircuts for the rest of the year. What you think, Schultzy? Oh. No sex. <laughs> you kidding me bro <laughs> we're almost Why? at the end of the year dog let's go i could do no sex at the end of the year that's easy no mm. sex come on dude gotta get that fresh haircut though. gotta get that fresh haircut man yo that's amazing how a fresh haircut 
will make you feel better than a good piece of pussy. Yeah. Because a good piece of pussy is so self-serving. Like, you know, you have sex and you make love to your significant other and it feels so good. It feels so great. But I can't go out into the world with that. No, you can't. Matter of fact, you got to wash it right off of you. I got to wash it right off. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That, that haircut presents to the world different. You get a week. You get a week minimum looking glorious. Glorious. You know that glorious. after sex glow? That's gone in two minutes, bro. You wash that off right in the shower. You don't have no haircut. You be questioning yourself. You're like, why is she Why is she having sex with me? And then you get a haircut. Like, You're like, I need to leave her. <laughs> 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 you, you look at me, bro. Girl, you? Kill okay, Stephen A. Charla. Yeah, okay, man. Them, fucking, them strokes hit different when you got a little haircut, bro. You feel better about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Fuck around and not no haircut, and you look in that mirror. You like, God damn, why she letting this old man fuck? <laughs> this All old right. man. Why am I letting this old man fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's the last one. Uh, Nayada says, "Yeah, oh, this is a good one. Who's your favorite celebrity in this coronavirus period? My favorite celeb in the coronavirus period. That's a great question, bro. That's a great fucking question. Um, I don't know. You go first. I think my favorite celebrity during this coronavirus period it's Stephen A. Smith. Ooh, okay. I think it's Stephen A. Smith because, you know, every day I turn on Sports Center. Uh, I mean, I turn on First Take because I'm looking for a sense of normalcy to life, right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, what they do on First Take is so incredible to me because they find a way to make something out of nothing. Like, it really is some real live slave cooking going on at goddamn first take. Like, they are taking the scraps, the bottom of the barrel of shit, right. and still creating amazing, compelling content. And right. Stephen A, Stephen A to me is the catalyst of that. I love Max Kellerman. love what he does. I love Molly. I love when Jay Williams is on as a guest. I love, you know, when, um, uh, what's the dude's name? Big dude, man. Uh, I can't remember his name. The football player. Damn, oh, he be fucking yeah. I know he, he played for the Chargers. Stephen A fucks with him all the time. Stephen A calls him a deacon. Oh, man. Anyway, go oh, on. I'm so mad I can't remember the brother's name. But I just think that what they do is so good, man. Like I, I watched them another day. First of all, they squeezed all the life out of the last dance. Oh, there's God, no more, did that. There's no more toothpaste in that tube. Mm, okay, there's up. no more milk in that carton. Yeah. That shit is done, right? Yeah. But they had a topic the other day where they was like the top five people that Michael Jordan should be thankful for. And it was a Stephen A list and Stephen, it was called, called Stephen's A list and he gave his top five and it was so good that I, I, my forgetful ass can remember every person. Number five, he had Phil Jackson. Number four, he had Isaiah Thomas. Number three, he had Scotty Pippen. Number two, he had um, Magic Johnson. Number one, he had David Falk, right? And mm. he gave all of these different reasons as why. And I was like, okay, interesting take. Max Kellerman comes on there and goes, Stephen A, that is a stupid list. He said, this list is terrible. It's so bad, right? And when Max explained why he thought it was so bad, what Max said made sense. Max said, Michael Jordan said he would never play for another coach other than Phil Jackson, right? And he didn't start winning championships till he got with Phil Jackson. He said that Scottie Pippen was the greatest teammate that he ever played for, and he could never have won those rings without Scottie Pippen. So how the hell are Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas over Phil Jackson and Scottie Pippen? He said, why isn't his father number one? And he said, I even give you that, Stephen A. I can understand why the father wouldn't be number one, whatever, whatever. You probably wouldn't want to put him on. That's a given. Mm -hmm. But the list is just terrible. And then they had a nice back and forth debate as to why. Mm. And, and neither one of them were wrong to me. Even though I didn't necessarily agree with Stephen A. Smith list, like Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen would have been one and two to me. Right. And yeah. then three would have been like maybe David Falk. Four and five, like just because your reasoning is is opposition. They were, you know what I'm saying? Like they were yeah. good opposition for Jordan and they were the obstacles Jordan had to overcome. Magic in his first championship. And then Magic made it to where a black man could be a star in the league like that. And Isaiah Thomas, I, I don't give a fuck about all that. Eh. But 
I'm saying all that to say, I think Stephen A is my favorite celebrity in this coronavirus pandemic just because he's so good at what he does that he's able to constantly make something out of, out of fucking nothing. I love it. He, he's incredible. Yeah, I co-signed that one. That's great. I mean, if you if you manage to make sports content without any sports, whoa, shit, god damn, god bless you, bro. You the fucking god man. God bless you. I mean, how much would we listen to like pastors talk if? We found out there was no heaven. Yeah, I know God. Right? Like, you think we'd still go every Sunday? That's what Stephen A. Smith is doing. That's such a good point. Right? He's talking about the old shit, and that's what pastors would be like, nah, back in the day, we believed, bro. That shit was, it was dope. Like, that's, everybody that's, was a good a person. Good that's why I love Bishop T.D. Jakes, because Bishop T.D. Jakes is just good at what he does. Right. That's why I love the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because they just good at what they do. Like you can just ask them questions. Yeah. They don't have to be in, in religious context, don't have to be about God, and they will give you great answers. I have a question you know for the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. What type of gel does he use? <laughs> Who knows? His hair is amazing, right? I mean, not a hair out of place. 87 years old. Not a hair out of place. Just turned 87, man. Mm-hmm. Just turned 87 years old. Yeah. Now that, now when you look at Minister Farrakhan, that will make you pick up a Quran. There you go. That right there. That might make, make me pick up, pick up some Murray's wave cream or some shit. That's <laughs> what it might make me pick up. <laughs> Praise Allah for Murray's. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I think I think we got it. All right, today. brother. Be good, my man. Peace, guys. As, Thank as, you. As, as, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.